I'm from a place called Haven. Our town's the best kept secret in the Bible Belt. Sounds nice. I was living back in uh, the south and I was working down there. And uh, I'd get lost in these sort of small towns that seemed to have their own history and their own ideology. As I was writing this and the pieces of the puzzle were coming together, I was thinking about a place that, uh, on the one hand, looked a certain way and felt a certain way, but as the story progresses, wasn't exactly what you thought about. Well, we're deep in it now. I think it's kind of cute. We're shooting entirely here in Louisiana, on location and, and in studios. Well, I say studios. If you call a, uh, a closed down Walmart a studio, we're shooting there. How's this? Does this work where you see this? Oh, look. <laughs> These people define Southern hospitality, and they've been really welcoming and really generous and just kind of opened their arms to us. They really love that we're here. When you film in these these cities that people are so used to, they kind of are like, get out of the way, you know, we're trying to get to work. And, you know, they just really take their time here to want to know about the movie, want to know about the people. You guys go to school here? Yeah. Isn't there a game happening right now? Yeah. And you guys are here? Yeah. Are you crazy? <laughs> The sets we've had to build and find are, are, are very varied on this film. Um, I think we've got some fabulous locations. Uh, we've had a terrific location manager who's found some really great stuff. Uh, my name is Peter Novak. I'm a location manager. We are going to a location known as Doug's Plantation. The property is a 220-year-old Georgian plantation home. The house is amazing. I mean, look at the, the volume of the rooms size of the doors. We repainted everything. The house was all white when we got here. Uh, bottom line is for photography purposes, you can't shoot a white wall. It's nice to be able to bring something to a film or to a director and have them say, this is incredible. This is, this is really, you know, amazing. We didn't even think about this. House was something that we looked for for a couple of months and it became apparent that due to what we were looking for we wouldn't even actually see it and if you're looking for stuff that's that's supposed to be remote stuff that needs to be rural uh, and you want to get off the road the easiest way to do is obviously to get a helicopter and get up and at least get a decent idea of, of what's where and how the land lies I've been doing films long enough now to know that I have the confidence to, to go somewhere and use that rather than storyboard everything to death and stuff. And so it's much, it's kind of a loose approach, but it's a, it makes it more fun. Unfortunately, we, we were caught in the middle of Hurricane Katrina, um, which is, uh, it's upset me quite a lot, actually seeing the mass devastation that it had on the state and I mean I know on our country as a whole but actually being here and um, experiencing it kind of firsthand um, was really heartbreaking. Most of our crew, probably 80% of them lost their homes and a lot of other, you know, uh, either friends or family or pets or whatever. So you had this devastating situation to deal with and, and we weren't sure if we should carry on morally but the crew asked us please to stay and finish it. The thing of them having having a job and having somewhere to stay, I kind of felt, you know, a little bit like, well, let, let's carry on, even if it's just for these people. Three, two, one, action! It's here and it's real and it, it, it works, and it feels like the movie is taking place where it should be taking place. And, and yeah, it's hot and it's uncomfortable, but that's all helps us and it all works for us. Father? I thank God I 
sent me a message. He wants me to warn you. I think one of the great things about being an actor is we get to um, tell stories. And when we tell these stories, it's all different characters every time. This puts me at 48 miraculous occurrences I've investigated with 48 scientific explanations. I'm sorry to say, the only miracle is that people keep believing. Uh, Hillary's character is, is interesting. I think it's something everybody can relate to. I think everybody at some time or other in their life um, believes in something. And during the course of life, certain events could happen that you'll question your belief. You know, it's easy to lose faith. I mean, look at Catherine. If an ordained minister can turn her back on God, then what hope is there for the rest of us, right? My character, Catherine, loses her daughter uh, in the beginning of the movie. So when David Morrissey's character, Doug, comes to her and says, I need you to help me with this. Some of the fellas were out fishing on the river. Water kind of went red on them. You know, it's kind of not really quite her thing. Yet he says to her, They're blaming on a little girl. And that gets her attention because obviously the connection with her daughter. You gonna be all right with this? I grew up in a place like this. Every bump in the night, a devil at the door. Turn on the light, speak in a soft voice, and they'll come right around. Yeah, I'm in because of the girl. This is an extremely painful journey for this character to have to go back and, and you know, test her faith and walk back into that, uh, into that part of her life, which was the most painful part when she lost it. But at the same time, it's as if a lifeline had been thrown to her, as if this is your second chance in a way to not write off all that was in your life in the beginning that was important to you. Catherine, this is Doug Blackwell. Professor? He's a local teacher in a small town in Louisiana. But he's also a village elder sort of thing. He's sort of on the local sort of uh, council. And, uh, and his family were founding fathers of this particular village. I come from a long line of only children. So he has a status through his ancestry. But he's, uh, his wife died a number of years ago, and he's quite a lonely guy. How long were you married? Seven years. Six of them cancer-free. Suddenly, you see the man opening up in a way that is unexpected to you. And that was when I read the script. It was a scene I thought, OK, I can, that's a starting point for me. I can start to discover this guy and see that you know he has complexity and he has a history. And that's they're always the things for me about character. My class is looking forward to their guest speaker. Sorry about that. I had a thing. What was her name? Idris, I feel like our characters in the movie are virtually best friends. They really know each other really well, inside and out. They work together every single day. They could finish each other's sentences. And um, it's funny, when I met Idris, I felt an instant connection. We definitely have, I think, great chemistry. Ben is a really interesting character because he is out disproving, if you like, miracles. But he's doing it because he's trying to find the real one. He, you know, he really believes that the gods exist, and one day, you know, one of these um, miracles are going to be turned out to be real. He's someone who gained faith after being, uh, you know, a sort of a drug dealer and a gangbanger and a street uh, criminal. You know, I think people need to believe in miracles. Find any real ones yet? Yeah. Yeah, two semi-automatics. At 10 feet, punches my liver, my kidneys, both arms, shattered my hip, 18th Street when I was young, doing dumb stuff. It's an interesting dynamic between Ben and Catherine, because Catherine is completely an atheist now, you know, and has no interest in finding a real one. In fact, when she arrives to a place where, you know, there is a so-called miracle, she's, you know, short of laughing out loud when she sees what's going on. I think Ben is an interesting character because when you consider his past and where he is now, he's like, he's come a long way.
And there's this little girl called Anna Sophia Robb. She plays um, this character who lives really out in the woods with her mother and her, her elder brother has just been found dead in this river of blood. And her, she was found nearby and the town suspects that she had something to do with it. She's five foot tall, blonde, and she lives out there in a damn swamp with the rest of them devil worshippers. She's very, she's very quiet and shy. So she kind of makes up her own little fantasy world, runs off in the woods and, and plays by herself. It appears that she might be able to create miracles. Uh, and you're not sure where these so-called miracles are coming from, which, what power is supporting them. You know? But uh, we, we talked about, we had, you know, we'd had great chats. We said, you know, maybe since you're a child, you've been walking out in the woods and you'd see a butterfly and you'd think, gosh, I wish there were a million butterflies, and then there were. And then as far as you know, it happens to everyone because she had no friends. She's like the, the outsider and the freak. And um, it, may, it seems it may have made her very dark and angry. Our job is to try to find movies for the audience that isn't what they expect. And, and I think we did it with this one. Um, I think it's really rare in this day and age to have that happen. I mean, I certainly read a lot of scripts and I see a lot of movies. And to be, to be able to fool me is, I think, hard.